Good morning. I hope you're morning or afternoon or evening. Whatever it is time that you're joining me today, I hope that it's going well. And I hope that you're excited for chapter two of our journey with Jonah. Now remember, just the quick backstory is very simple. God tells Jonah to go to Nineveh to, to speak to them. He says, no way am I going to Nineveh. He turns and runs the other direction, um, sails the other direction. The uh, boat that he's on hits some really big waves, this divine and supernatural, really big, just the, the storm that just seems to be consuming the boat and not allowing it to go anywhere, forces Jonah to reveal who he is and then to cast be cast from the boat by the sailors who have had this close personal experience with, uh, with Yahweh who calms the storm as soon as Jonah's in the water. And the sailors make sacrifices to the Lord, showing that God uses even broken vessels to show the world his glory. And then a big fish swallows Jonah. That's where we meet him in chapter 2. So this is a kind of a neat, as we move through the book of Jonah, we see that this is a very interesting story. And it's because it's not really a story of a prophet, but a failed prophet. A uh, prophet who, in his brokenness, here we're going to find that he meets God, and God works with him, not so much to uh, to proclaim his message to the world, as to uh, to show Jonah how much he loves him. And that's what we're going to see here in chapter 2. So I hope you enjoy this beautiful piece of poetry that we're going to be reading today. Jonah chapter 2. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the belly of the fish, saying, I called out to the Lord out of my distress, and he answered me. Out of the belly of Sheol I cried, and you heard my voice. For you cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and the flood surrounded me. All your waves and your billows passed over me. Then I said, I am driven away from your sight, yet I shall again look upon your holy temple. The waters closed in over me to take my life. The deep surrounded me. Weeds were wrapped about my head at the roots of the mountains. I went down to the land whose bars closed upon me forever. Yet you brought me, brought up my life from the pit. O oh Lord my God, when, I was, when my life was fainting away, I remembered the Lord. And my prayer came to you, into your holy temple. Those who pay regard to vain idols forsake their hope of steadfast love. But I, with the voice of thanksgiving, will sacrifice to you what I have vowed I will pay. Salvation belongs to the Lord. And the Lord spoke to the fish and it vomited Jonah out onto pond dry land. <laughs> and that's our chapter. So as we dive into this, we see a man at the edge of death, literally in the grave. And remember, this is an important context for us because Jesus says that it's the sign of Jonah that he will give the nation. So the sign that he will be in the grave for three days and then rise up again as Jonah was spat out. So here we have Jonah kind of living this half existence, somehow in the belly of this fish, alive, but not sure what's going to happen with his life. And in the midst of it all, he confesses. He cries out to God. He um, describes both at this moment the fact that he's realized that God is a God who is saving him. He's able to say, I will see the temple again. I will make sacrifices again, which shows us that he takes the sign that he's been swallowed by this fish as a reason to believe that God's going to bring him all the way out. Um, but he also, in this moment, is reminded that God is a God of mercy. And that God is showing him his mercy, as he says. And the powerful word at the end of this is, I have vowed I will pay, then salvation belongs to the Lord. One other thing to note about this book is the ever-present, constant use of the first name of God, Yahweh, the name that he gave the people. It's just over and over and over again used in this whole book. Now, the reason that's important is because it shows a very personal knowledge of who God is. It's uh, a very, um, uh, to call upon the name of the Lord. It shows that they're not, this isn't just a book that has um, 
kind of distant understanding of what it means to be in relationship with God, but it, it invites us to see our relationship with God as a face-to-face, name-to-name sort of thing. And so here we're called into that. And Jonah's called into that. He who was running from God. And it raises questions about why he was running from God in the first place. And one commentator says something that I like a lot. He says that the reason Jonah was running from God was, quite frankly, that he didn't want to speak good news, the news of salvation to the people of Assyria. He's supposed to go there and warn them away from their sins. He's supposed to go there and tell them there's great evil in your midst, you know. And he doesn't want to do that. And you could think, well, he doesn't want to do that in case they kill him. But remember, Assyria was a chosen enemy of Israel. And one that was going to eventually be the one to swallow up Israel altogether, almost destroy Judah. Like, the ten tribes were consumed and uh, by the Assyrians. So... Jonah's decision not to go to Nineveh might have been just as much the fact that he didn't want them to receive the grace that God freely gives. And once God warns you from sin, he's inviting you to run closer to him, to know him in a special and a beautiful way. So Jonah didn't want them to have any part of that, and that's probably why he was running to Tarshish. Now here, we see that his heart is beginning to be softened. And he trusts in the Lord, and he prays this beautiful prayer to the Lord. And then there's a very inauspicious ending to this. As the Lord spoke to the fish, and it vomited Jonah out upon dry land. And so this beautiful poem, that's chapter 2, begins with, The Lord appointed a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. And it ends with, and the Lord spoke to the fish, and it vomited Jonah out upon dry land. And we see Jonah's life saved and restored in this very um, ironic and should be a laughable sort of way. Kids love it, right? The idea, you know, a fish vomited you up, ha ha. That's what it's supposed to be. The fish caught Jonah, not Jonah caught the fish. Um, it's supposed to show the foolishness of Jonah's whole journey here. And once again, we get this sense of God's great sense of humor as he invites us to ask the, you know, to ask the question of ourselves, are we doing God's will? And if we aren't, what foolish lengths is he going to have to go to? Foolish for us. What foolish lengths are we going to go to to try to escape from the will, wonderful will and plan that he has for our lives? Let's pray. Father, we come to you thanking you because we each of us know that in our hearts there have been days and there have been times when we, like Jonah, have been in the valley of death, where we have given ourselves up in rebellion and in anger in hopelessness and in idolatry. We have turned our backs on you and you have been faithful, faithful as you were to Jonah, to rescue him, to call him your own and to... Um, put your seal on him such that he is not even consumed, protected in the belly of the fish. He is vomited up onto dry land. We praise you, Father, for the way you have spared us, for the way your son who went into the grave like Jonah has, um, he who faced death on our behalf has given us grace so that the death has no, death has no sting for us. We praise you for that, Father. And Lord, we pray that you would give us wisdom today to walk humbly before you, to listen to your commands, to do your will for your glory, so that um, your name might get all the glory in our lives, in our community, here in Miramichi and beyond. We pray for your peace and for your protection. And Lord, we lift up those who are in the hospital. Pray a special prayer for Lise, Lord, that you would bless her and heal her, that you would strengthen her, Father, and give her full use of her arm and her leg. We pray for others who are recovering from serious illnesses, Lord, that you would give them strength and give them peace. And, Father, for those that are housebound, we pray that you would give them joy. We thank you for this time, Father. Go before us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all.
Thank you for joining me today.